Hi, I'm James Van Osdell, and this is Carcon Carne. That man on screen with me is Brent Sopel. Brent is a retired professional hockey player. As a defenseman, he played professional hockey in the NHL, KHL, and AHL. And in 2010, he won the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks. Brent Sopel is dyslexic. He's the founder of the Brent Sopel Foundation. And though he's known for playing professional hockey, he would like his legacy to be that he did everything within his power to assist dyslexic children everywhere. And that leads us to the You Are Not Alone series, which this interview is part of. Our guest this week is, quite simply, the best diver in the history of the sport. He's won four gold medals and one silver medal in the Olympic Games, and he has plenty of medals and honors beyond that. In his personal life, he came out as HIV positive in the late 80s and has done a lot of substantive work, substantive work as a gay rights and HIV awareness advocate. He's written books. He's been the subject of his own 30 for 30 short on ESPN, Thicker Than Water, He's appeared on TV shows like Portlandia and Entourage. He is a legend. He is an icon. He's an inspiration. Our guest this week, Greg Luganis. Sure. Silver, silver medalist at the age of 16. I need to have a talk with my kids about where they're at uh, in their <laughs> lives. <laughs> Those <laughs> underachievers. Yeah. Oh my 16-year-old, yeah, I'm going to call her after two. But what, what, so... an what an interesting balance, though. I mean, here you are, you're tough childhood you're wrestling with dyslexia and then on the other hand you're winning the silver medal in the olympics what does that do to you to your head emotionally because kids are messed up emotionally just in general at the age of 16 oh you know, yeah all this swirling around how did, how did you reconcile how do you stay grounded i guess well it you know it was you know a, a, a lot of the kids in in high school um because i was a sophomore you know going to the olympics um, but you know, a lot of the kids didn't know what I did. I kept it away from a lot of people. Um, one thing that I did do is I, you know, I did help coach the men's and, and women's dive team from freshman on. Um, but they just thought I was a pretty good diver. You know, they didn't, they didn't know that I, the caliber of diver was world class. So I didn't share that with them. I didn't think they would be interested. So it, so it was really, it was really interesting when I came back from Montreal um, with a silver medal, everybody was celebrating me and I didn't understand it because I went there to win. I didn't go there to take second because Dr. Sammy Lee was coaching me at that time. He was Olympic gold medalist in 48 and 52. He was coaching me to beat Klaus DiBiase from Italy, who was going for his third Olympic gold medal, and I failed. So coming home, I thought I was a failure. So it was really confusing when I got home because everybody was celebrating me and I didn't feel worthy. Wow, I mean, in, in hindsight, looking back, you realize the silver is a pretty big deal, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, took many, it took many years before I could hold that silver medal with any pride. Wow. It, it now, took that day. Question for you. Did you yeah. not tell the kids in your high school because you saw, you thought that they didn't care or you or was it your head telling yourself they're not going to care? Well, that it, it was, it was in my head, yeah. you know, because what, obviously it was in my head um, because, you know, when I was in third grade, I, I did a acrobatic and modern dance routine to Tears of a Clown, and I got beat up for that yeah. you know, because I was a sissy. And um, well, now that we are, right? You know. Yeah, and, and 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 so you know that's that's what where my head went to. What my story I was telling myself was that oh they don't they don't care they don't. You know, but I did go to my, what was it, my 30 year reunion? Um, I went to one of my reunions and um, I couldn't go to my 10 year reunion because I was at the Olympic Games. Um, and so then, um, not, I didn't go to uh, 10, 20. I went to my 30 year reunion. And at my 30 year reunion, I, I just went on a whim, went down there and, and um, somebody brought up that, when I did my that dance in third grade, I said, "Oh my God, here it comes!" You know, and and all the people around say, "Oh my God, yeah, I can't believe we couldn't believe that a kid our age could do something like that. That was so awesome." I mean, and they were like, "I was like, oh my God, you're kidding!" You know, 
But those are the voices when you're a kid you don't hear. Yeah. And you know, kids don't share those things. Yeah, that's the real dyslexic side of us are those voices. From yeah. a very young age and they only get bigger and bigger as the older we you know, as older we get and have to deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. Going yeah. back to learning your HIV positive, yeah. Thinking about where we're at in the present day. We're recording this in twenty twenty one. PrEP is a thing. So many advances have happened in, in the past few decades. Back in the late 80s, getting diagnosed with HIV, HIV for a lot of people was a death sentence. It was right? a death sentence, yeah. Could you, ever, could you ever have imagined, one, being around today, two, seeing the advances that have been made so far? No, I mean, because <clears throat> like when I was diagnosed um, in 88, six months prior to the Olympic Games, you know, I honestly did not believe I'd see 30. I mean, even my doctors were saying, you know, get your affairs in order. And so then, you know, time, you know, progressed and, you know, the protease inhibitors came on, you know, it, it's been difficult, you know, because I viaticated my, in my life insurance policy, you know, I, I mean, there were so many things I didn't, I certainly wasn't saving up. <laughs> for retirement, you know, right. no, like I, you know, I, I think I was smart enough to, you know, to save a bit, but, you know, I wasn't planning for the future. You know, I wasn't really planning on being here. Wow. So, I mean, I even had a, my 33rd birthday, I thought I was telling everybody goodbye. You know, because and now I, you're 61. yeah, now I'm 61. 30 now, I'm 60, now I'm 61 looking for a job. <laughs> you know well, anyone that hiring? Hang on. I'm 44 <laughs> looking for a job. You want to team up? <laughs> yeah, well, here's the yeah. thing. We're something together. We can do something. Of course. I'm <laughs> sure. We've got so much to offer. For people who are listening and not watching, what, they, what they're not seeing is the fact that Greg Luganis has somehow reversed the aging process. He says he's in his 60s. He, he looks like he's 15, 20 years younger. It's almost, it's almost uh, supernatural, whatever you're doing, Greg. He <laughs> looks younger than I do. I, you know, I, I think, I think I, I have my, my biological father to thank because <laughs> he's Samoan. And so I think, I think that's, that's got, uh, that's got a, a lot to do with that. But also too, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all in, um, you know, in your, you know, what, what priorities you have. I mean, and that, and that's the thing, I'm, you know, my priorities each day, you know, get my yoga practice in, get in my meditation, all of those, you know, all of those self-care type things that oftentimes we have a tendency to neglect. For sure. You did your auto, you wrote your autobiography 25 years ago. Do you feel yeah. any need to add to the story? I mean, lots has, lots has happened since then. Yeah, a lot, a lot has happened since then. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been mulling over uh, what, you know, what that next book is. <laughs> because I also wrote a canine care book um, for the life of your dog. And it's a basic care, you know, um, de uh, birth to death and grieving, you know, the entire life, life, um, life of a dog. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think there's another book in there. So I would imagine. There's yeah. no question, you know, you're past 30 years past where you thought you'd be in life. You've never yeah. been in a place um, mentally, spiritually, physically than you are today. So, you know, I'm not very good at math, but I think there's a book there. And yeah. speaking of dogs, this is a selfish question, and it may not be a question you can answer. I have a Bernese Mountain dog. Are they, in fact, the most stubborn dogs known to the modern world? Bernie's mountain dogs, they're, no, they're awesome. It just, you got to figure out what they like. Because the, you know, burners can be, you know, independent, but you have to figure out what they like. <clears throat> I mean, I, I had this one, one dog, it was a Mastiff, that um, wasn't real food motivated, wasn't real toy motivated, but would go nuts for like a gallon, a plastic gallon jug. You what? Know, is he full of beer or was something in there? Am I missing that, something? <laughs> the, you know, like the, the milk jug, you yeah. know, the gal gallon milk jug. That's awesome. And he would like pounce on it. He would, you know, his mouth was big enough. He could, you know, crunch it in his mouth. He'd do anything for that. 
So the key is finding what they like. And it may not be what you expect. For sure. Going back to your advocacy and, and support of the LG, LGBTQ world, are professional athletics better with their acceptance of LGBTQ in the present day? You know, I think they're better. I think definitely, you know, they're, they're better, a lot more awareness. Um, you know, we've got all out sports, we've got um, athlete ally, you know, there's quite a few organizations that are out there that are um, welcoming to the LGBTQ uh, plus community. Uh, I, th I think in, um, you know, I just joined uh, with uh, Nancy Hogshead Makar, um, you know, the trans, you know, this, that, that's a whole nother thing. And I'm, I, I've been blessed uh, because not a whole, I, 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 when I would do speaking engagements, you know, talk about the LGBTQ plus community, I was like, look, I know a lot about the G in the LGBTQ plus community, but I had to learn about those other letters. And um, I was blessed to, uh, you know, to be doing a show in Chicago. I did Just Say No with Alexandra Billings, um, who is the first transgender that, you know, that I knew of um, and had, you know, wonderful discussions, you know, with, with her and awareness. And, um, and Larry Kramer was just incredible. God rest his soul. Um, and, uh, you know, and then also Chris, Christian Worley, I was on a panel with her in Australia. And so there's so much and, and, and really w within the trans community, I mean, there's so many, there's as many different stories as there are people. And so just be open and aware and just having, you know, and I told Nancy, you know, I said, I'm, I'm so grateful to, that we're finally having these discussions, you know, about trans, um, trans athletes, you know, and bring, you know, bringing uh, things fairly, you know, comprehensively and, um, and just having that, that, that communication open is so important you know, to, to being on a path of um, acceptance and, and embracing, you know, the trans community. A little off topic. How did it feel to watch Mario Lopez play you in the TV movie <laughs> adaptation? I thought he did a good job. It was funny because like I, I body doubled him at the time. Um, I, I, I did the diving and it was funny because like when I was on set, we started talking. I said, oh, yeah, I grew up in Chula Vista. And I said, oh, my God, I grew up in El Cajon, you know, which are right next to each other. And then we started talking about our upbringing. Um, and um, I did talent contests in at Grossmont High. And, you know, it was a big, huge talent contest. You know, oh, my God, I was in that same one, you know, years after me. But, um, you know, it was it was so cool that we had very similar upbringings. Um, and I, I used to, you know, jab, you know, jab him, you know, that, you know, he, I should look so good because he looked pretty hot. <laughs> and it, it was like, I should look so good. You know, it's like, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, but we're, you know, we're also working on a new biopic. So um, could have a different, different look. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we, we've talked so much about the positivity and, and you as a role model and as an icon, Greg. Mental health has been such an important topic over the past year as, as we've all been isolated, cut off from what we usually do, who we usually see. After overcoming and achieving everything that you have, what would you tell that kid, that adult, that person who's struggling to be heard, especially now, struggling to fit in and, and find hope at the end of the tunnel? You know, there's... I, it's it's really important to um, you know it's it, it's hard to connect because of the quarantine and all that, but um, finding outlets, you know, creative outlets, are so important. Whether that is music, whether that is writing, whether that is you know uh, photography or film or you know, different things, different, you know, uh, different things, the way that you can kind of capture things for yourself, 
you know, that are, you know, that things that you can, you can really celebrate. And I think that that's, that's really important. You know, there's all kinds of support groups that are, are out there too on Zoom, you know, and finding, you know, those support groups um, is very important because, you know, like Brent said, I mean, it is so important to, to realize that we're not alone, you know, because that's when, you know, when suicide happens is when we feel isolated, we feel alone, and we feel that absolutely nobody will understand us. And, uh, and it's so important, especially for young people to know that, you know, others have, have come before, you know, and there are other people who are going through the same things that you are. So you're, you're never alone. You may feel alone, but you're never alone. And suicide is a, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Well said. You know, with men, it's at seventy percent of the suicides are men. You know, because yep. of that ego. Because we, you know, it's you know, obviously men and women are, are very different, and you know, they, women want the strong guy and the man. To, you know, reach out to one of us. You know, yep. Greg, you've been through everything, and, and, and look at you've never been better. And you know, myself, I've been through hell and back, and here I am. You know, reach out to one of us. It's you know, because if we don't support each other and don't help each other, um, what do we got? You know, we've got nothing. You know, God's yeah. kind to be here today and love you know, both yeah. you gentlemen. And, um, you know, if somebody needs something, the day of the Zoom, it's a lot easier to reach out. Before, you know, Greg, there was no support groups for you. You had to drive around, you know, in California right. or drive to find one. Now you can get online and you can find somebody or you can find that support. So. Um, know that somebody's out there for you. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and reach out, you know, don't be afraid because really you can't help somebody else without helping yourself. So when you reach out to somebody, if you're hurting and you feel like you're being a bother to somebody, you are not because by reaching out, what you're doing is filling that person up with their value, you know, and, Oftentimes, like, um, you know, one thing that happened, you know, to me was uh, somebody wrote me a note, you know, like 15 years after we had first met. And I'm telling you that that note has saved my life at times. I keep that note very close to me because, um, you know, it's it's never completely all over. You know, when you're dealing with depression, you know, you have you know, peaks and valleys, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it can be a bit of a roller coaster. But I mean, I, I keep that note, you know, close to me, because he commented that I saved his life, but in turn, he saves my life anytime I feel down, because I can take that note, and that will fill me up. And there's, and give me the everybody credit. says, oh, I don't want to burden somebody. No, you're not burdening us, you're, you're actually helping burdening. us. You're yeah. helping us. You are, you're throwing us a lifeline Yes. Yeah. by reaching out to somebody else that that person that you're reaching out to, you're, you're throwing them a lifeline because you're giving their life purpose. Right. And that's the biggest thing. And, you know, um, I get that. I don't want to bother you. No, you're not bothering. You're saving me. You're yeah, throwing me, exactly. you're throwing me a life jacket when I'm trying to swim. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and don't be mistaken. Anybody who ever can, can listen to this or hear this, you're not a bar burden to me or Greg or anybody. You know, you're saving us in ways that, you know, we hope you'll find out yourself when you get down this road. Yeah. Well, Greg, it sounds like your dogs might need a little trip outside or some, <laughs> some they Greg might. time. Uh -huh. and, well, actually, you know, because my birthday was was Friday, so I'm at a friend's house, and they made dinner for me, a little birthday dinner. So, uh -huh. um, I, I think they're about ready to serve uh -huh. cake. Yeah. <laughs> We're certainly not going to keep you. Happy uh, birthday! You know, thank you. You're a Capricorn or Aquarius? Aquarius. I'm a Capricorn, so we're close enough. Oh, uh, wait, when's your birthday? January seven. Okay, my husband's January four. Okay, so yeah. What's that uh, book, The Outliers? They, you know, you talk Malcolm Gladwell's I, I, Outliers, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. But the, 
um, all professional athletes come with birthdays in the first three right. months. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Cause Malcolm Gladwell, you know, that's, that's what started outliers was yeah. hockey. Yep. Yep. Prime example, that, January 7th. That's it. Oh, you know, um, we'll leave it. I know it's your birthday dinner. Um, thank you for, for coming on. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and an honor that you took time out of your birthday dinner. So please apologize for me to, to your family and friends. Um, no, no worries. Uh, and if you're hearing Greg talk and, and be so giving with his thoughts and his story, I just want to give him a hug. Like yeah. after. Oh. <laughs> oh, Thank you.